You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9. Coming up on this edition of the show, we'll find out what's on the New Year's agenda for the Noble County Chamber from Director Alan Fraley. We'll talk about the outdoors with Game Warden Roby Williams, and we learn what's going on at the Cambridge YMCA from Tacey Bates. It's all ahead on this edition of Talk of the Town. From the U.S. Bank Studios, it's Talk of the Town with Perry Baranich. Welcome to a brand new edition of Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. Snow sure is pretty, isn't it? Yeah. You mean, you is know, that every, what that is? Everybody talks about moving to Florida. <laughs> if you're going to go now, go to South Florida because North Florida is cold. <laughs> the laughter that you hear to my left or would be your right if you're watching TV is Alan Fraley, the executive director of the Noble County Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. Glad to be here today. Good to have anybody here today. Well, I snowmobile, like I'd have been know? here earlier, but... <laughs> I stayed on the road. Oh, well, we do live in Southeast Ohio. Yes, we do. We not? So uh, where do you want to begin? I know we're looking forward uh, ahead to 2018 because we're in it now. Where do yep. you want to start? Well, I'll tell you what. One of the things comes out, comes out in today's paper. Okay. Uh, second annual State of the County lunch, February 1st. Well, that's last not year, too far away. No, last year we did it on February 1st. It was a political year, and we got mm -hmm. some new people in office. Mm -hmm. We thought this would be a great thing for the Noble County Chamber to do to actually put a couple of the ideas out there is where, how did we finish up the previous year? And sure. then what are we looking at? Not sure. Goals or objectives, nothing you actually have to paint on the wall, mm -hmm. but where are we heading? And February 1st is a good time to basically say, let's throw this out there, get some people together and have a conversation. What is the state of the county? Uh, let's, let's back up uh, a okay. few sentences. Sure. How did you end up 2017? Well, we ended up really well, really well. Uh, I mean, you have, to, you have to look at it in a couple different ways. When, when you talk about 2017 as a whole, in Noble County, we had two major pipeline constructions going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of activity mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. Now, we also had one of the best summers uh, attendance-wise at Wolf Run State Park. That's great. Now, we're promoting Wolf Run as a very paddle-friendly, mm -hmm. because we have a 9.9 .9 horsepower mm -hmm. limit. Mm -hmm. um, and it it's... It's kind of the balance to Salt Fork. So if people come to the area and you want to sail in a bigger body of water and you want to water ski sure. in a big state park, you go to Salt Fork. You go to Salt Fork. Right. If you're a kayaker paddler and you don't want the waves and you actually don't want a lot of anything, you just want to be closer to nature, mm -hmm. then the much smaller state park at mm -hmm. Wolf Run. Mm -hmm. So basically right here we share that. So we had a much larger attendance at Wolf Run, bringing out the paddling and the other things like sure. that. As far as the business trade goes, the more visitors you have, the better your business. The better your businesses are, which basically improve employment opportunities. Exactly. And and people will reinvest, as we're sure, seeing across sure. the nation, reinvest Absolutely. in their business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this year on February 1st, we're actually going to break it down kind of like we did last year. I like the TED Talk format. We have five speakers, 10 minutes apiece, okay. no questions. Okay. So they get up, they get to present. Mm -hmm. Then at the end, we can stay for questions mm -hmm. if people have questions. Now, mm -hmm. the beauty of that is the people who need to get back to work, mm -hmm. lunch and learn, mm -hmm. can, do, can so. do so. By yeah. 1.15, the program is over and everybody can head out if you don't have questions. We are going to have county commissioners give a report on the overall 2017 and looking forward to 2018. That'll be time more speaking on behalf of the county commissioners okay. and the things that they oversee. Okay. We then are going to have uh, the Noble County Sheriff's Office speak. Okay. Of course, the big thing last year, out of last year's state of the county, we started the fundraising that day, thank you, Mark West, in getting our own drug dog. Oh, okay. So now Great. we have Great. Zeus, Noble County's own drug dog, which let's, let's, be, let's be open here. We always borrowed Guernsey, Guernsey County's, County's drug, drug dog. Okay. So now that we have our own drug dog and our own funding for it, now Guernsey County doesn't have to make those runs mm -hmm. to Noble County mm -hmm. when there's a need. So that which, saves money in well, itself. Number one, it saves money, but number right. two, it allows Guernsey County to do more with their dogs. Right. And you right. see, all of this came out right. of last year's State of the Union. Well, it all came out of necessity too, which Absolutely. is you know, another topic in itself. 
our county health commissioner, Sean Ray, is going to talk about the overall health of the county. We have done some joint um, health assessments between Guernsey and Noble County. Mm -hmm. Noble County kicked off its CARES program, mm -hmm. and which was basically fo focusing on the drug addiction problem and how, as a county, we can do that. We'll get an update from Sean Ray on that. Then we also have Noble Local School Superintendent Dan Leffingwell talking about what's coming down the pike from Columbus to help our southeastern Ohio public school system. Okay. That new apprenticeship program that's coming here for the kids that don't want to go to college. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have, I like this. I Ward, like it too, and you Warden, haven't even said it yet. <laughs> Warden Tim Buchanan from Noble Correctional no, Institute. Oh, okay. Noble County has this partnership with NCI in the fact that there are certain things like the snow plows that get painted mm -hmm. for the parade, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. those kind of things that that involve Noble County public with the prison population. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. also have volunteers that go in and do volunteer programs. Mm -hmm. There is some efforts that are being seen where the recidivism mm -hmm. is moving forward. That NCI is, is giving these prisoners a better view of what they could be doing once they're released, mm -hmm. which is kind of the goal. Yeah of this rehabilitation. That is good. I know we get uh, a lot of, uh, they do a lot of community service yep. with artwork yep. and things yes. for vacation. Yes. We, we've taken vacation advantage Bible of School. that a yes. lot. Yeah. A lot of the public yeah. organizations, the 501c3s, yeah. are able to do that. Yeah. So that's February 1st. Now it's $10 we got less for than lunch. A minute. Okay. $10. Okay. Subway. They basically set up a buffet. Eat you pick fresh. your sandwich, eat. It's right there. <laughs> they, they make it in the morning, guaranteed. Oh, yeah. And go right through it. So the, and that, all you have to do is call the office, 732-7715. Okay. Make a reservation so we know how many for lunch. Okay. Or if you absolutely positively just want to come and hear the speakers, we'll let you in the door for free. But please give me a call or log on to the website. All right. And then we'll get you signed up for that. All right. A lot going on in Noble County. You can find out all yep. about it by talking to Alan Fraley, the executive director of the Noble County Chamber of Commerce and Tourism Bureau. Pleasure to see you. Always good to be here. Thanks for we the snow. No, you're welcome. <laughs> I put in the order like last night. Okay. Back with more Talk of the Town right after this. Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. The Old Country Loft in Byesville is full of quality country primitives and a whole lot more. Ruth Dixon and her crew bring you the things you need to decorate your home with country charm and warmth. The Old Country Loft, corner of Main and Glass Avenue, Byesville. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. Check out Talk of the Town on Facebook. Go to Facebook.com slash Talk of the Town Show and stay up to date. 
Welcome back and thank you for watching Talk of the Town. It's always a pleasure to uh, have Roby Williams in, the Guernsey County Game Warden, because we just, you know, especially this time of the year when people want to know numbers. Yep. Uh, you know, deer season, and I didn't know deer season is still in. It sure is, yep. Yeah, we still have our, our archery season runs uh, till the, lo the first Sunday in February, which will this year will be February 4th. So uh, still a few weeks out there. If you got a, a tag in your pocket, you might want to be thinking about filling it pretty soon because uh, you can't eat tags. And you said it's still a good, great time to hunt. Right it really now. is. Yeah, I just got. Uh, I was just successful last week and harvested a deer uh, with the snow on. Uh, the colder weather, the deer mm -hmm. are, are moving, looking for food mm -hmm. sources. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of folks put uh, uh, feed, deer feeders out or uh, dump some corn on the ground. And if you if you if you have that out or have had it out. Uh, even if you haven't, I think you could put something out and mm -hmm. pretty quickly attract some, some deer into your area and, um, and still have, like I said, still have an op opportunity with our archery equipment okay. to harvest the deer. Uh, last week, we just finished up our last gun season of the year. Muzzle loader, wasn't it? Which is muzzle loader okay. season, yeah. And uh, overall, another good, another good season. If you remember the first couple of days of, of muzzle loader season, as is several of those weeks, it was pretty cold. Yeah, brutal um, cold, yeah. Yeah, it was really cold a couple of days in muzzle And it's so hard to be out in that, you know. It is. You, you got to want to hunt <laughs> if you're going to go out in single digits. Yeah. Um, it's not just a recreational pursuit. Or be a Rambo. I mean, one or the other. But. Yeah, so, but uh, I think that might have contributed a little bit to our, a small decline in the total harvest. Mm -hmm. um, statewide, we were at uh, 13,268 for this year, and that compares to 15,800 last year. So a little drop. Yeah, and that's statewide. Here in Guernsey County, we were at uh, 463 deer checked in this year. Okay. That compares to 490 deer last so year. So it's pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, it's, uh, not, not, not a significant in, uh, increase or decrease at all. What about overall numbers? That's a good question. Um, <clears throat> we had, uh, our biologists had predicted a small uptick in harvest this year, and they're spot on. Uh, this year, statewide, we're at, at 179,000 943 deer so just shy of 180,000 deer okay totally total harvest for for ohio okay that compares to about 175,000 at this time so last we're, year we're up yeah so we're about 4,000 deer up from last mm -hmm. year um see where it ends up for the end of the year but i say we're certainly looking is being now up. is that cyclical now will you look for a down tick next year well you know it'll be depend it, it'll be dependent upon um Many of the other many factors, including total harvest this year, um, we will compare a, a antler deer harvest to antlerless harvest. Okay. You know, how many does we harvested this year? Okay. That's going to impact the, our future proposals, and and because of that, we don't have our proposals out till February, which okay. we can talk about in a little okay. bit. Okay. Sure. Um, but yeah, it, so so having an answer for what next year's harvest looks like will be dependent on several of our surveys, our, to okay. our to total harvest for this year, and then our biologists will be able to put together a packet and have an idea what, what next year looks like. Okay. I was wondering, uh, before you actually sit down, and I, I read your notes, um, you know, what other seasons are kind of in right now? Yeah, we still have several of our, our game seasons in. Squirrel goes out the end of this month. I think grouse goes out the end of this month. Uh, so our seasons are winding down. Uh, rabbit season's still in. I know there's a lot of guys out rabbit hunting. <clears throat> Probably a little bit heavy snow right now for the rabbit dogs to be out yeah. but uh supposed to warm up towards the end of the weekend and probably <coughs> see several guys out chasing rabbits through february okay but most of all of our trapping seasons are still in okay beaver trapping river water trapping still available through the end of february <coughs> excuse me so um a lot of still a lot of opportunity uh for folks to get out and i know a lot of guys this time of year um get a little bit of cabin fever mm -hmm. it's cold that you know mm -hmm. um good opportunity uh, for coyote hunting Oh, okay, yeah. I've checked several guys coyote hunting uh, already this year, and with the snow on, probably is a good time to get out and uh, uh, track track a coyote. You know, get your dogs on coyotes or, or set up and, and hunt them. Okay, and waterfowl. You said uh, waterfowl looking for open water right now. Yeah, right? if you if you're a waterfowl hunter and you found an open hole of water, you, you're probably going to have a successful day. Um, uh, our waterfowl seasons in our south zone are still in. Uh, duck season goes through January 28th this year. And our goose season will go out on February 5th, which is a Monday. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, again, if opportunities are available there for uh, finding geese in the field okay. um, or, or someplace like that, you probably got a good chance. And, again, open water was, would be a honey hole right now if you had one. You know, a lot of people um, don't go out hunting because it's so cold. But on the other side of that, uh, ice fishermen really love it right now. Yeah, if you're uh, – if you, if, 
if you like to fish on, on what they call hard water, mm -hmm. uh, ice <laughs> fishing is probably a good opportunity right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Lake Erie seems to be freezing up pretty well. Here locally, I've talked to a lot of folks that have been on farm ponds mm -hmm. fishing. Mm -hmm. I've seen several guys on Seneca Lake fishing, ice fishing, and I just wanted to cover a few things there. Number one, rules and regulations. Um, if you are fishing on our public waters, you can't drill a hole in the ice that's any larger than 12 inches in diameter. Okay. Most of our ice augers are, you know, are going to be in that right window there, of time, yeah. any uh, yeah. window of area, uh, but obviously for safety concerns. Um, <coughs> ice, uh, if you have, if you're using tip-ups, which is a device used to fish, mm -hmm. um, you can't uh, have any more than six of them out. Okay. Along with two poles. Okay. So a total of eight. Okay. Which you could have in the water. If you have tip-ups, they have to be marked with uh, your name and address or your customer identification number. And if you have a shelter, like an ice fishing shanty mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that, it also has to be marked and identified. So, uh, you know, just a few, few simple rules for ice fishing basics. I um, think more importantly, as far as if we were going to talk about rules and regs, it is certainly as important as the safety concerns. Sure. And the making sure of the ice. Yeah, I making mean, sure you've got good ice. Yeah. And uh, clear ice is good ice. Okay. If you have this freezing and thawing and freezing, mm -hmm. and that ice gets mushy and cloudy, mm -hmm. it's not what we would consider good ice. Um, general rule of thumb, four inches. If you want to have four inches of good ice okay. for one person you, to be on. You can, and we've got about 30 seconds. We're already through this segment already. Wow, it's okay. amazing. Yeah, good, good ice, um, and, and make sure you got a plan if something happens to get out. Yeah. A lot of people things. swear by ice fishing. I tried it one time. It's too cold for me. I'm yeah. fair weather guy. That's but, right. That's know. okay. But, you know, so much going on, and that's why we have Roby on, because he's the man that's out there, and he knows what's going on. So just always be safe, whatever you're doing. Roby, thanks for coming on. Appreciate thanks for having it. me. Hey, back with more Talk of the Town right after this. Talk of the Town. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. For a show schedule of upcoming guests and to watch past episodes, go to yourradioplace.com. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're coming to you as always from U.S. Bank Studio in beautiful downtown Cambridge. How many days till spring? Uh, not enough. Ah! Too many. <laughs> but she loves winter. Just <laughs> love it. Tacey Bates from the Cambridge YMCA. I mean, it just kind of makes it hard to, you know, I mean, when, you've got an organiza when you've got an a, a organization that's open to the public, I yes. mean, it just wreaks havoc, doesn't it? It does, and I have to think of staff safety concerns oh, yeah. and member yeah. safety concerns, and our policy has been for the last several years that a level two and we will close. shut down. Right. Um, I will be reassessing here shortly and seeing if we're still on that level two. We'll close for the day, but... Yeah. Um, there are plenty of other ways to get exercise in this beautiful winter weather. You can go out and shovel your driveway, shovel, just do a it neighbor's driveway, yeah. you know. Yeah. Go shovel Tacey's driveway. I, I've yeah. Yes, my driveway would be a great place to start. <laughs> uh, 
But again, people just need to play it by ear this time yes. of the year. I mean, everybody yes. wants to go to the Y, but there are circumstances that beyond you know, my control. Beyond I didn't control. order this. That's exactly right. This was right. not. I asked for seventy and sunshine. So uh, when the Y is open, yes. um, What do we? What do you want to talk about today? You were you were mentioning youth leagues. We do. We have registration right now for the youth leagues. Um, Adam's sons played in those, but we do the basketball and the soccer for the kids ages three and up. So, I mean, every year we do it. We have over 400 kids there on the weekends, plus their families, grandparents, aunts, uncles. Everybody phenomenal. comes to watch. It's great. I love it. Well, it's one of my favorite you, times of year down there. Especially when you think about the population. I mean, yeah. uh, half more are taking advantage of the Y. And it's not just Cambridge. I mean, we distribute to mm -hmm. local schools. So John Glenn and Buckeye Trail and Meadowbrook and Cambridge and Caldwell all receive the flyers. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have kids coming from a lot of different areas mm -hmm. around here. Mm -hmm come in and they they just want to play and let's face facts it's winter there isn't a whole lot you can do outside There's, for yeah. long periods of time and they need to burn off, and the, energy. To burn off the energy <laughs> yeah. so you bring them yeah. to me on Saturdays and Sundays and we and do the basketball and the soccer before you bring yeah. them to Casey and then go from there and, I'm yeah. fine with yeah. that I, I have a whistle and a stopwatch <laughs> like we're good it is it is and it's is. A, I'm okay with that but we do basketball <laughs> on Saturdays okay. and soccer on Sundays the first two weeks are always fundamentals so they'll go in and again uh, Captain Jeremy Wilkinson from the Sheriff's Department will be helping me both days run Good. the leagues and we'll do fundamentals so they'll come in their certain age group and we'll do skill sets you know basketball you've got to learn to dribble and okay. how to do a bounce pass and a chest pass and you know how you want them to hold their hand to shoot simple things like that and we do that for two weeks and then the parents get the game schedule picture schedule okay. And you show up and you play your games. And everyone gets a t-shirt and we are in everyone plays, everyone wins type of facility. Yeah. So we do give out little medals at the end. But the kids really just like being able to come, saying they're a part of a team and play their games, have people cheering for them. We pull the bleachers out. Parents are just sitting there clapping. It's great. It's a really great atmosphere. It really is. It is. And then on soccer, on Sundays, we build soccer walls. We have huge... They're not light. Um, mm -hmm. So if anyone wants to come volunteer at about 11 o'clock on Sundays when we put these <laughs> walls up also. But um, we, we set the walls up, put the goals in, and then the kids are taught in that fundamental range how to dribble the soccer ball, how to shoot the appropriate way. to you, you, You're not using your toes. It's the inside of your right. foot. Right. And how to do some defense, how to step on the ball and stop it, how to pass it to their friends. And then we do the games in the three through five-year-old group. It's one like ball. Like oh, it's, it's one ball. It's like it's fifteen, so, twenty kids. It's like a rugby scrum. It's you know, really, it's so cute. It is so cute I've, to watch. I've them. asked, um, <laughs> and I I'm still working on getting permission. I want to go live. Yeah. During yeah, some of yeah. these, I think that would be great. Oh, it is. Um, and normally we do two weeks of fundamentals and we go straight into games. Mm -hmm. But this year I have to take a break week because on March third the YMCA of Cambridge is host to the district gymnastics meet. Oh. For our girls. Wow. That's and a big thing right there. They're out there doing phenomenal things. They've been in the newspaper. They have a Facebook yeah. page. If you have not looked, follow. If you have a young child who wants yeah. to try gymnastics, yeah. get them in the program. Start them in the progressive classes. These girls are out here taking first, second, third. I mean, we have plenty of podium pictures where it's our girl first, second, third. It's all the time. It's all the time. Yeah. They're training hard and working hard, but we we have to skip a week there and then go back okay. into our games. Okay. So but, You know, when you're teaching the young kids the fundamentals of basketball, the fundamentals of soccer, then that just enables them to have what they need to go on as they get yes. older and they'll pursue that yeah know? and we have so many repeats that come mm -hmm. year after year after mm -hmm. year um, I'm sad. It's my oldest. This will be his last year it's to do it. Last year too. Oh, is that right? Yeah. So sadness overtakes you. Yeah, but I still have one more. You yeah. know, I've got a couple <laughs> yeah. years with him. So, but um, now, how does someone go about? registering then? Come into the Y. I have forms. Like I said, we did distribute them to local schools. Now with this beautiful weather we're having, we haven't had a lot of school days for them to get passed out from yeah, the schools. Sure. But um, we did get them into the schools. But I do always have them at the front desk so you can stop in and register, do the payment, and they're in. Um, while you're in, I encourage you to take a tour of the Y. Walk through and see what we have there and besides the sports because during the month of January, what yeah. we were going to talk about, yeah. the, the join, 
If you bring two bags of non-perishable grocery items, we're taking those to Grace Pantry. We will postpone or defer, if you will, your join fee. Maintain your membership through 2018 and the join fee drops off and, and, and you're done. Yeah. Should you need to cancel at any point in 2018, you're responsible for the join at cancellation, but I mean, it could save you $75 at sign up and you would help feed hungry families in our area because Grace Pantry has quite a... And you could do a lot with $75. You absolutely can. You absolutely can, yeah. So, yeah. so that is going on in January, yes, right? The joint free is January. going on. Uh -huh. and, and you're just trying to get folks in. I mean, it's all about getting healthy. Yes. And it really is. And you don't have to come in and use all the free weights or mm -hmm. all of the equipment. You can take mm -hmm. classes like cycling mm -hmm. and cardio. Drumming is back with Tasha. And mm -hmm. I'm teaching a new one, Morning Groove, on Thursday mornings, a yes. dance class. So there are classes. You, you can do a whole bunch of things. You can go in and shoot hoops. You can get quite a cardio workout in the gym. Yeah, you can. And it's all chasing your ball because you're not making every shot. We're, we're finishing up this segment. The main thing is start. Get start. started. And a great place to do it is at the Cambridge YMCA. Tasty Bates, always a pleasure. Yay. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming in on a uh, blustery day like today. It's great. We'll be right back to wrap it up. Learning Jungle on Main Street, formerly Main Street School Supply, is located in downtown Cambridge, just west of the courthouse on Wheeling Avenue. They have a huge selection full of educational resources and toys to teach, as well as entertain. They feature a large inventory of gifts for children of all ages, and you just have to check out their selection of stuffed animals, puppets, games, and so much more. The Learning Jungle on Main Street, downtown Cambridge, has layaway for your convenience and is the area's only specialty toy store. A world of knowledge is waiting for you at their front door. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. Your one-stop shop for all things computer-related is ABC Technical Services. Whether it's designing a new website, website maintenance, PC repair, or over-the-phone tech support, ABC Technical Services has you covered. ABC Technical Services can set up a new network, install the latest antivirus software, and they even offer full video production and editing services, too. Give them a call at 740-432-5605 or visit them online at abctechnicalservices.com. A name you know, a name you trust. ABC Technical Services. That is going to do it for this edition of Talk of the Town. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks again to our guests, Alan Fraley, Roba Williams, and Tacey Bates. Yeah, I tell you what, and you're talking about the elements. Uh, you want to be careful out there for current weather-related cancellations, delays, and closings. All you have to do is log on to your radioplace.com, and you will also see the current snow emergency level there as well, so you'll know if you should venture out or just stay home under a blanket drinking hot chocolate. That sounds wonderful. For producer director Adam Green and Perry Bronish, we'll see you next time on Talk of the Town. Stay warm. Have a coffee for me. Bundy Law Funeral Home has worked since 1924 to earn the confidence of the families they have served and continue their commitment to the community. They offer a complete range of quality services, from funerals to cremation, and honor all faiths and customs. The staff at Bundy Law understands you need to know all the available options to make the right decisions for your family. A price list is available upon request, and they invite your comparisons. You will make the right choice when you choose Bundy Law Funeral Home. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest bank in the country, and while being recognized nationally for their strength and stability, they continue to provide hometown service. At U.S. Bank, they provide a variety of products and services for your consumer and small business needs, such as free checking with internet banking, loans and lines of credit, and free financial planning services. At U.S. Bank, they're proud to support the growth and development of their communities by helping local business owners achieve success. Cambridge is more than just a town. This is our home. Supporting downtown Cambridge means shopping at the places we love with the people we love. For the stuff we can't get anywhere else. 
Food that tastes like home. And personal service from people who know your name. The money we spend here will keep our town growing. Let's all shop small for our town. The home we love. And the uniqueness that makes Cambridge a a great great place to live, work, and play. Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge prides themselves on offering the largest inventory and the best customer service in the area. Visit their lot and experience the Classic Difference. The Classic Difference provides customers a service above and beyond what you'll find anywhere else. Their service department, body shop, and parts department strive for the best service and pricing in southeastern Ohio. Stop by the lot and browse their large selection of new and pre-owned inventory, ask about easy financing, or schedule an oil change. That's Cambridge Classic Ford in downtown Cambridge. Stop by and experience the Classic Difference for yourself. You're watching Talk of the Town on Cambridge Cable TV 2 and a new Concord on Orbit TV 9.